Hello, MMT followers. Christina Fuges with Mole Baking Technology for another quick MMT chat. My guest today hails from Italy, and although he was born and educated there, he is currently part of the U.S.'s effort to educate our next generation of manufacturers with his more than five years of academic experience in plastics processing technologies, with a particular focus on injection mold design and manufacturing. He is an assistant professor in plastics engineering at the University of Massachusetts Law. Welcome, Davide Masato. Not, not only is Davide in academia, he is one of Moldmaking Technology's newest editorial and advisory board members. I introduced him back in the February issue this year, so go back and check that out. Um, mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know or may even be interested in serving on our advisory board, the EAB is a 12-person panel that just generally helps to guide the direction of the brand's content with their, I like to call it their boots, the boots on the ground insights. <laughs> So Adabade also serves with me on the board of the Society of Plastics Engineers Mold Technologies Division. So I'm sure he would agree with me. We both encourage you to check out that group at mtd.4, the numeral four, spe.org, and on our LinkedIn page. So before we get into your perspective on what you're seeing happening in the world of mold making, let's get a little bit deeper into your background. So basically, why plastics, why teaching, and why UMass Lowell? Thank you, Christina. So happy to be here. Uh, I'll get right into things. Uh, why plastics? So uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by education. So I come from the design point of view when we talk about plastics. I'm not really a polymer scientist. I'm not a chemist. I have a mechanical engineering, a design background. And I think what brought me into plastics was the people that I met along the way. So I had great mentors uh, when I was doing my master's degree at the University of Padova in Italy. And they inspired me so much to get into knowing more, knowing more about plastics, knowing more about manufacturing. And I also got the opportunity to experience hands-on uh, mold design, mold making, and injection molding. So that's why I got into plastics. And then, you know, you get in front of those big machines and you start to like them. You start to get interested in all of those small components that comes together to make a plastic part. Yeah. So that's, that's my background. Um, after I did my uh, PhD in Italy again, I moved here to the University of Massachusetts Lowell to become a teacher and to become a researcher in the field of plastics engineering. So I took this opportunity and this challenge to join the number one program for plastics engineering in the United States and probably maybe in, even in the world. And uh, took the opportunity because I saw for myself a great challenge to work with great people. We have a great group of faculty members, uh, very well. known around the globe and so for me it was a perfect opportunity it was a very good match to join this group of people and trying to make an impact on our students from a teaching point of view trying to push them in the right direction with plastics and have more people helping us with plastics you know there are a lot of challenges there are a lot of problems with plastics but we have the great people we need to pull together more people to solve the problems and uh so i feel that i'm in a very good spot right now and we also do a lot of research. We'll probably talk about that a little later. Yes. But um, it was a combination of being in a place where I can make an impact as a teacher, but also as a researcher. I love it. I love and to then, hear of course, that. Having the, having the opportunity to join like memberships, like SPE, um, the editorial advisory board of the mold making technology, connecting with all these different group of people. Uh, for me, it's a great experience and it's a great opportunity also because as a teacher, we need to be able to connect the students to the industry and we need ourselves to be like that point of connection. So I feel like these opportunities are great because I can keep the connection. I can keep up to date with what's going on in the mold shops, what's going on at the manufacturing side. So all great opportunities, great experiences. And I, I agree with you. It's integral to what you want to provide to that future generation. Plastics and mold making are so community based that if you, the more you expand your network and exposure will only help your students. So I think that's really smart of you to look beyond the classroom, right? And get involved and show them Correct. that. And actually that there's a world out there 
for what they're going to school for. There's trade shows dedicated to what they do. There's yeah, magazines yeah. dedicated to what they do. You would like to think that helps legitimize, you know, yeah. the industry that they're they're dedicating their life to, hopefully for the future. So I, I commend you for looking at it that way and not just teaching. So thank you. I noted in your February intro that you worked with several manufacturers to develop solutions for a number of things, micro and nano structured plastic surfaces, rapid heat cycle molding, vacuum venting, mold coatings, you know, a bunch of stuff. So I know we can't get into each one of those, but I thought I would ask you, you know, of the research you've done up to this point, what is the one that has captured your interest the most? And give a little bit of details about that. Okay, that, that's a tough question because I really enjoyed all of those experiences and all of those different projects. Um, probably I should say that um, the most fun and the most learning uh, project for me, it was working with a company where we were trying to optimize a mold surface coating for them. So they were interested in redesigning this product, uh, plastic product made with an engineering thermoplastic, and they wanted to get a better product less weight so also reduce the, the environmental impact of these products and so they approached us as a university um, as a research consultant we could say to basically do some experimental characterizations in the lab so it was a lot of experiments in front of a press and before that it was putting together a mold that we could use to do some testing and instrumenting an injection molding machine so you see as a mechanical engineer has, having those Experiences. It gave me the opportunity to interact with a lot of different things, starting from design, processing, a little bit of materials, because also you got to learn something about the coatings and how they interact with the polymers, and then putting everything together for a company that eventually is going to have a product and it's going to go to the market. Yeah. And I, I'm proud to say now they're marketing that product to be more sustainable than it was before. Oh, that's great. So, so you see having just a, a legal contribution to a larger product in which they're making like huge molds but um it was very satisfactory and it was a lot of learning for me and for the students that were involved in the project ah that's also the students got involved in that also yes so when i say uh going back to your first question teaching and research i see them being going together because you know as we do teach students we also have them work on research projects. So a lot of our students at the university, they do apply what they learn contributing to research projects. So you start as an undergrad where you're just learning and maybe you shadow someone else and you can just you, you know, do the dirty work, do some polishing, do some cleaning, and then you get up to speed, you progress in your career, you become a graduate student, and now you're able to lead a group of people, a group of younger students and be responsible for okay. a small project and then report to a faculty member or a, another senior researcher that's going to help you. So yeah, those it's experiences, good. yeah, are, are, are very important for the students and um, they really appreciate those opportunities. I like what you said about seeing something that you've worked on being realized in the real world. That is a lot of what has happened with COVID-19. A lot of the mold manufacturers and the industry has really there's been a spotlight shown on what mold builders were actually part of bringing those critical face shields and ventilators and respirators to the market. So it's that same satisfaction of even though what they do every day matters, something that when there's a life on the line, that they were actually had a part in making that product. It's that same theme of just we can do this. You know, we're, we have yeah. our hands in it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, absolutely. It was a great opportunity. So what is your, what are some current research that you're working on right now? So uh, it all revolves around uh, product and process design. So I have a couple of projects, uh, one for the army in which we're designing some um, polycarbonate sapphire composites for face shield application. Okay. So not medical, but um, face shield that are supposed to resist ballistic threat. So, oh, okay. so high impact resistance. And then I do a lot of work on mold design. I think, you know, as I look at the injection molding is probably my expertise. Uh, the mold is where I see most of the technology being. So, you know, there's a lot going on 
in terms of mold design, mold making. And uh, so my, myself and my team were studying, for example, right now, how we can use femtosecond laser. So mm -hmm. a laser with a low power, high frequency to basically create some texture on the mold surface, on the steel that eventually are gonna interact with the polymer flow. And so we're trying to study how those mold polymer interactions can affect the functionality of the product uh -huh. or the functionality of the mold. And there's a lot of uh, material properties that goes into it, starting from the mold going into the polymer and of course the process. So it, it can get down to um, fundamental research, but at the okay. same time, our approach is that of doing experimental work in the lab. So we have injection molding machines, we have a, a CNC machine, okay. and we have a laser, and we try to combine those things together. Wow, that's awesome. So you've also earned a lot of, well, several honors and awards throughout your career <laughs> so far, which I commend you for that, congratulations. But what really caught my attention, which is related to what you were just saying, is this, you are a co-founder of a startup company that's based in Italy, and that's all about surface treat mold surface treatments also, right? For injection molds. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So smart mold uh, is something that um, was created after my PhD at the University of Padova. So my advisor with another researcher and myself, we funded this uh, small company uh, that is now focused on developing mold surface treatments for injection molds. And we're now working... Uh, I should say they're now working because I'm not uh, working with them right now here in the US, but they're now working with Cirmax. Okay. Cirmax is a, a company um, in Italy, but it has facilities in the US, Indiana, and also in other places in the world. And they mainly do polypropylene compounding. So a lot of um, appliances, automotive, and we're working with them, doing some engineering work for them and eventually trying to uh, together push new materials and uh, new surface treatments for injection molds. Huh, that's great. So that, is that, how much time does that take up of your, you know, your teaching, your researching, and then you have this going on on the side? Or, but I guess it's all kind of related, right? Yeah, it, it kind of is. Uh, I should say right now it takes 0% of my time. Uh, so um, being here in the United States, I'm not working on that at the moment. Okay. I am focusing on teaching, research, and some service at the University of Lowell. Okay. So uh, I have great connections with those people and we do research together, but uh, the startup is now mo mainly working in Italy with Italian companies, okay. European companies. So we haven't yet uh, been able to make any connections here in the United States. Okay, I'm sure you will. All right, so let's get more specific. Now that you talked about, you know, your passion and what you're doing right now is mostly teaching. Let's talk about COVID-19 and its mm -hmm. impact on everything. Now, I know from having a 16-year-old how it has impacted my son's school life. So you're on the teacher on that side at a certain level. You actually got really innovative in your team and altered your approach to teaching mold design and you've basically gone virtual so let's and there i must do a shout out that we did davide did do an article that's going to appear in our september issue that breaks down this concept but let's talk a little bit about how did you teach it before and how did you alter it to um you know to combat what COVID has done to us right now in terms of teaching yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for sure, COVID-19 was a great challenge, but also an opportunity to, you know, do something different and also explore new methods of teaching. I want to say that, um, and you'll see that in the article, we do not think that a virtual mold design class will ever be a replacement for an Anton class. Of course. But uh, still, we think uh, it was a good experience for our students. And um, basically, Starting from March, uh, myself and Professor Steve Johnson, another faculty at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, uh, we had to reinvent our lectures and our labs. So the class is usually lectures in which we discuss uh, a lot of design guidelines for injection molds, starting from filling, gate design, runner design, design of cooling systems, design of ejection system. 
and we go through all of those details. At the same time, the students have some lab sections in which they learn how to make a mold. So as a team of students, usually seven or eight students, they start working together, design a plastic part, and then eventually take it from a plastic design that they made to an injection mold at the end of the semester. Of course, this year in March, we had our part design ready, we had our tooling splits ready, and we were excited to start machining because machining is a lot of fun for us. Uh, it's a time where um, Professor Johnson and I get to spend a lot of time with the students. We get to you know, be hands on with them and uh, it's a great time. Uh, a lot of work for us because we need to you know, push the machine. We need to make sure that we can cut all of their tools, all of their inserts by the end of the semesters, but it's a lot of fun. Um, this year, what we had to do, we had to replace those activities with more design-oriented uh, experiences. So our students will still require to design their injection mold to work as teams, but we had them do uh, deeper analysis of their cooling system. We had them analyze into more depth their injection system and make sure they could optimize what their part and mold design were. Of course, uh, in a conventional semester in which we have three or four months to get to the end, we're not able to make optimal molds in which we optimize the cooling system, we optimize the ejection system. We just have them work with a standard mold base in which every group in the class can fit a five by seven aluminum insert. So now this year, they had more freedom. We gave them the opportunity to go online access small catalog from whatever uh, producer you want to uh, use and then download your components and start putting together your mold and analyze run your calculations and make sure that using n calculations using your cat skills using your injection molding simulation capabilities that you learn in class you can put it all together and get an optimized mold design and so I think overall it was a great experience because we could sit down, down together with the students. Of course, it was all virtual meetings, but you know you have the time to dedicate to that individual student, to the two students that really are in, looking at how to design a mold sleeve and an ejection sleeve, how you assemble that into your mold, how you're gonna machine that and put it all together. And uh, it was a lot of exp experience for them. It was a lot of challenges still. Um, you know, when you're in the lab, there is a lot going on. You yeah. you have to cut your ejector pins. You have to polish. You have to make sure you're ready because at the end of the semester, you want to have your plastic parts. Right. Now it was it was more like okay, let's do it well. Let's make sure we analyze all the details. Let's look at all of those small design features that needs to go into our injection mold and let's make sure that we get a good design work out of the semester. I think so, it, it almost it almost allowed you to or them to slow down a bit, right? And I think really it focus did. in. I think overall the virtual uh, teaching, the virtual semester, it kind of slowed down a little because of course th there's not the frenetic uh, day of being on campus yeah. running around i need to yeah. move to the other room i need to go to the lab but it was more like okay now i need to focus it's my responsibility uh what i think is the virtual semester put a lot of responsibility on teachers and on students to make yeah. sure that we now get to focus and deliver on what we are working on and so yes it was a, more time that we could dedicate to the students for sure and more time that the students could dedicate to their design work do you think when it gets back to normal, is there anything you learned from that virtual experience that you guys are like, you know, maybe we, will you change the curriculum a little bit? Say, hey, now we need to add a little bit of this in there. Yeah, I think um, we're always trying to, you know, make the most of these type of experiences. And I think being able to record all of our labs, being able to, you know, we have those SOLIDWORKS labs in which we do design. We have those mold flow labs in which we analyze uh, the injection molding process and also the master count. Mm -hmm. Now we have a library of videos for all of those activities that we can use and give out to the students also next year so that you know they can learn 
in class and then they go home and at their own pace, they can look back to the video, go through the steps. And nice. I think it will be very useful. And um, I should also thank our teaching assistants for that because they were very helpful with recording and editing the videos. It took a lot of time, but I think oh, it, sure. was, it was very useful. Yeah, that's Especially awesome. when it comes to the, to the master camp. Uh, that's usually the end of the semester. And that's something that students always tend to struggle with because, you know, they don't have a lot of hands on experience with machining. So that's when they get to see it. And, uh, you know, realizing that tool will not be able to machine that feature or you need to get that bead to machine that other. Uh, that's a lot of hands on experience. And uh, I think having master videos will definitely help and will definitely Absolutely. make sure that we. That's true. In lieu of the hands on, that's critical, I would imagine. Absolutely. So you spend a lot of time with next generation manufacturers, you know, potentially men and women who will be entering plastics and mold building. So I have to ask, because this is an ongoing next generation challenge, I guess. Have you, what have you experienced with your students that you believe you could offer advice to future employers? You're like, what are some characteristics about these younger adults entering the workforce that employers need to know how to, how to work with them better, how to communicate with them better. What do they bring to the table that past generations just didn't bring to the table? Yeah, so I think our students, but in general, I, I should say like young engineers, what I'm noticing is that they have a lot of opportunities. There are just so many opportunities out there. Sometimes it's even difficult for them to choose what they want to follow. And I think plastics is, um, it's still a niche because there's still not a lot of knowledge in you know common people about what the plastics engineering industry is doing. There's not a lot of information about what you can do as a plastics engineer and what the impact that you can make is. Yeah. And so I think reaching out to um, young children uh, and exposing them even during high school, middle school to what manufacturing is, showing them what you're going to do at a university if you go into manufacturing, if you go into plastics engineering and having them exposed to those type of experiences, I think it's crucial. And then as they get into college, uh, what we realize is that there are not enough graduates for the demand that the yeah. industry yeah. is putting our way. So uh, companies are always like, OK, we want to hire 10 students. And they think it's easy to do it, but it's not because they're just students have so many opportunities. Awesome. They get to the side where they want to go. So you got to engage with them early and you got to make sure you provide them with good experiences like co-op opportunities. 98% uh, of our students will go out for at least one co-op during their undergrad. So they're going into a company and they're, they have the end on experiences to make an impact right away. And they're eager to learn and they want to go out and they want to come back to school, learn more. And then eventually, if they did like their experience, their co-op, they're going to go back to the company they know. Exactly. They're going to go back to, to the people they know. So I think engaging with them early and showing them uh, the impact that they can make. Uh, also in terms of sustainability, because we definitely see a lot of attention from students and younger generations about um, how plastics could be sustainable. Yes. And what we're trying to tell incoming students is that they got to get into plastics with the idea that they can make an impact. They are going to be part of the solution because the solution is not removing plastics from the world. It's getting more people, smart people to help finding better solutions, finding sustainable exactly. manufacturing solutions. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for companies to engage with students at the university. And we definitely encourage everyone to connect with us at the University of Massachusetts Lowell to, you know, provide talks. We always host technical talks, uh, mold shops, uh, manufacturers. Uh, everyone is welcome to give a talk to our students and, you know, get to know them. I, I, well said, because I agree with you in terms of the need, the supply and demand, right? So you wish that. That's the marketing side of manufacturing stinks because I think if more children knew how easy it is right now to have the pick of the career you want, 
You know, and there are some manufacturers that will pay for you to go back to school. Like everything about there's so many, there's more positives than negatives to the trades. And that I cannot believe in 2020 that still is not out there. They still don't yeah. get it. So I and, and, and you know and, and you know what? It's a great group of people. Uh, I think what what you get the sense of like in our department, but as a whole in the plastics industry, it's like a family. You get to know a lot of people, yes. and then you get to connect with people that are working across the, the country, across the globe, yeah. and it's a great experience. And when you get into that uh, community, I think there's a lot you can learn and you can there really is. progress into a nice career. I agree. Well, Davide, uh, I think we could talk for hours, but <laughs> we need to wrap this up, trying to keep these yeah, nice yeah. and succinct. <laughs> so yeah. before I let you go, though, I cannot let this go without congratulating you on being a new dad with your beautiful thank you very daughter. Much. She is gorgeous, you. your beautiful daughter. Actually, maybe maybe I could provide a little photo of her. She's beautiful. So God bless her. Her thank name you. is Rebecca. Congratulations. Make sure you get some sleep to keep yourself energized for, for your students. <laughs> we need to get ready for the semester. So <laughs> Exactly. It's, keep things going. So thank you again yeah. for your time. I really appreciate it, Christina. Thank you no very problem. much for your time. No problem. And remember, everybody out there, for everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay informed, and stay inspired. Bye-bye.